Hey everybody, this is Jerichos, and welcome back to Eternal Darkness. Last time, we played through what I consider to be the, or at least one of the most unsettling set pieces in the whole game. We played as Peter Jacobs, but we managed to defeat the Greater Guardian of Ulioth. city. None shall enter except the Chosen. Speak. You are the Chosen. For many years I have tested those who came here and all have failed. You are unaffected by the power I wield and thus must surely be the Chosen. I? Once I was as you were. Confused and without answers, yet they came in time. Now my duty is complete. I can finally rest. My sacrifice was not in vain. And that was how I came by it. I know it sounds crazy, but there you have it. The only proof I have is that statue. Hmm. It's a strange one. I've seen one like it before. You have? Yes. Very rare, though. Very obscure. I've had experts take a look at it. And none of them know what it is. And you do. I'm somewhat of an expert on these things myself. An interest I developed a long time ago while I was a young man. Then you should keep it. Lord knows I have no interest in it. I am sure it's the cause of my sleeplessness. I keep thinking about it. As if it's calling out to me. Then a drink, perhaps. For the gift. For an unusual objet d'art. You are not free to leave this plane until you complete a task for me. You are to hunt and kill the master of this house. Do this one thing and you will be free. Else fear the wrath of Chaturka. Everything is complete for your arrival, Master. Now we must wait for the planets to align, and that is not too many years from now. Another Roybus has crossed our path. This time, we will not be so merciful. He will meet such a horrible death. 
that the rest of the line will never set foot in his house again. We managed to defeat the Greater Guardian of Chaturga. And we've actually found another chapter page, A Legacy of Darkness. Let's see who we're playing as this time. My education in psychiatry did not prepare me. I would love to see how Freud's view of his mother would change with the knowledge of Chaturga. How Skinner would incorporate Zelotath into his behaviorist theories. How Jung would accommodate Ulioth into his theory of the collective unconscious. Like my ancestor, Maximilian, I too had an interest in my family tree. As a psychiatrist, I believed that science could provide answers into my family's sordid, bizarre past. It was with great excitement that I began my search. The mansion's history was filled with my colorful predecessors. Everything from convicted and hung witches to committed madmen, each laying their own peculiar mark on its character. I intended to find their secrets. And we get to play as Edward Royvis, Alex's grandfather. And this part of the library is reserved for the entertaining of the house's more scholarly guests. A simple yet elegant layout affords quiet drink and conversation. And he only has one item in his inventory, liquid courage. A small flask of the old sauce, liquid courage. A magical elixir to power one's spirit in the face of adversity. Bottoms up! Using this will regain sanity. Kind of neat that he's got, you know, something to instantly refill sanity there. Also, what's this up here? A book? A journal of family history rests on the mantle as if used recently. Sure, let's look at the historical journal. An old musty book, bound in dry, dusty leather. This book covers the early history of the Royus family, dating back before the settlers in this land. There appears to be something pressed between the pages. It's the minute hand of a clock. Hmm. Well, let's wander around and see what we can find otherwise. So yeah, Alex isn't the only Royvis to see Max's ghost walking around. And oh, what's this? An ancient scroll of paper sits on the chair. Magic pool. Hmm. Well, we can't do anything with that yet because we don't have the book, but we'll hold on to that for the moment. If we go over here, it's that clock that Alex used. A looming grandfather clock stands ominously in the corner, gazing on the empty room with an almost patriarchal air of its own. The ghost asked Edward to set the clock, but there are no hands on it. Edward must find the clock hand so he can set it properly. Well, we got one, but it's not enough. We need to find the other one. So let's wander through the mansion and see what we can discover as we go. Do you say anything? Politely, she asks Edward if there's anything she can do for him. That's very nice of you. 
Uh, let's check the basement. Nope, that door always seems to be locked. Uh, let's head over. A large carriage clock sitting on the foyer table. Beautifully crafted, but it appears to be stuck with the hand set permanently to 333. Seriously, what's with that number? Although I get it, it's probably referenced the fact of the three ancient gods constantly, you know, fighting each other. 333. A grandiose kitchen fireplace. With all the amenities of modern life, it hasn't been used in quite some time. Oh, I totally missed. There was a guy there. What do you say? Servant notices Edward's presence and comments on the weather. Idle chit-chat. Nothing else to find in the dining room, kitchen area. Oh, hey, hey, come here. As Edward nears, the servant stops mumbling to herself and asks him if he thinks the weather will clear up before the solstice. Edgar finds the reference to the solstice rather odd and ponders its significance. Hey, hey, that piano. Edward has never learned the piano, but that's not stopped him from hammering away at the keys now and again. It's very therapeutic. Perhaps one day he would learn it properly. Uh, ooh, we got a weapon. An antique cavalry saber mounted on a display stand gleams in the moonlight. Uh, let's see, talk to you. Puttering around with the crockery, the servant informs Edward that the table has been set for him just as he likes it. Yep, just one place setting. Ah, oh, poor Edward lives alone. Cavalry swords, like this saber, were used chiefly as an item of ceremonial dress for officers. The brass knuckle guard was a style popular with both American and English cavalry officers in the second half of the 18th century. Well, I'll go ahead and equip it. Never know when you might need it. Hmm. That same circular fashion. Perhaps it has some significance? Yeah, we know what the significance is. Well, nothing else to find on the ground floor. Let's head upstairs. Oops, excuse me. And see what we can find up here. No creepy bust to watch us as we wander through the hallway. Oop, some more ammunition. Some shotgun shells, that's good to know. Cur courteously, the servant asks if Edward is in good health. I thought it said curiously for a second. I'm like, um, shouldn't he ask that? Being polite. The master bathroom is woefully spartan and only barely contemporary. It appears to satisfy the most practical of tastes, or perhaps someone who has their mind set on other things. At least no dead bodies in the tub. Now, head out. Still haven't found that second hand of the clock, or hour hand, minute hand. I don't even remember which one we already found. I think we found the minute hand. Hey, bud. Oh, no, that's ammo. This room has become a second late night study. Edward has grown accustomed to the ancient feel of this Civil War themed room. Feels he can concentrate quite well in it. It's not gonna let me talk to you. Oh, there we go. Yeah, same thing. Edward is reassured at the sight of the family gun cabinet, itself a priceless antique. He'd rather not have to smash the windows to get inside. But where did he leave the key? Hmm. Mayhap we'll stumble upon it. A journal family history. This one, an old musty book bound in dry, dusty leather. This book covers the recent history of the Royvis family, going per back perhaps 150 years. Appears to be something pressed between the pages. The hour hand. So we'll take that back down to the clock. First, let's continue exploring up here to see if there's anything to find. Muttering to herself as she works, the servant comments on how the mansion is never really clean. Hmm. I feel you. I don't live in a mansion, but even my house is never fully clean. Ooh, that's disturbing sounding. She informs Edward she believes the weather will worsen. Says she hasn't heard it being this bad for many decades. Ooh. A storm is definitely... Well, I was to say it's brewing, but, I mean, it sounds like it's constantly going out there now. Well, nowhere else to explore. Let's head back to the library and go see what happens when we set the clock. 
I'm pretty sure you can already guess what's going to happen, but I won't spoil the surprise. The ghost asked Edward to set the clock, and now with two hands on the clock face, it can be adjusted. Take it to 3.33. Oh, I almost had it. Well, first, before we grab the book, let's wander through the room and see what all we can find. A loaded revolver is mounted on the wall by means of a display plaque. I feel like if you mount it, you shouldn't have it loaded. It seems unsafe. But I don't mind, because, hey, it gives us ammo we can use. A painting of a jungle-shrouded building. It seems to be a temple in Asia, perhaps from Thailand or Cambodia? Yeah, it doesn't confirm, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the temple we've been in before. Detailed drawing of a surreal city, reminiscent of old ideas for futuristic cities. Its draftsman was very talented, for as he stares, he believes the inha tiny inhabitants peer at him from the shadows. That's neat looking. Some more ammunition. Alright, it's time. Let's pick up the book. And because we had the scroll, we get Magic Pool, which is a, it's a neat one. This magic transfers the innate magical energy of the environment to the self. The limitless power of the ancients will be at your disposal for the duration of the magic. Once the magic is waned, you'll be able to be bereft of spiritual power until it naturally seeps back into your being. This is basically, you put a rune over your head that will restore whichever element of gauge you choose. So cast it with the green rune and it'll constantly be refilling your stamina. Red, it does health. Blue, it does magic. I find, let's see, which runes was it? I'm going to find the, go ahead and do the five and seven point ones. Tyr and Redicamore. I have found that I pretty much exclusively use this spell with Ulioth. Let's see, Redgamore, Tear. Because it's just... It, it's so much better to restore your magic as you go through, like how I do recover with health primarily. And I'm going to go ahead and cast the seven-point version of the spell. And you'll see it puts the rune over our head. As long as it's there, even if we're standing still, our magic gauge will refill. But if we move around, it refills even faster. And you know what? Uh, whoop, nope, I didn't mean to hit that again. Um, already forgot. Shield is down below. Let's do a shield. And let's enchant our weapon. Because something tells me now that we have the book, enemies are going to start coming out of the woodwork. Alright, we're good. Lots of blue. And speaking of enemies coming out of the woodwork, we got some weird vampiric-like creature. And he can go invisible, too. But we could hear him. He left the room. Uh-oh. Sorry, lady. I had to take you out. Yeah, she's not a bone thief. She's just... Corrupted, I guess? But half of a key tumbles out of the vase that has been toppled and smashed. Glints on the floor. We'll definitely take that with us. Now, out here, because he went invisible, let's go ahead and cast the seven-point Reveal Invisible spell of Dominant Color. 
And is he in the room? Oh! Edward looked up, and we heard the door creak. Let's head upstairs. See if we can chase him. Where's he going? Oh! He's running down the hall. So he runs into this room. And he's attacking that servant. So what we need to do is get in there as quick as possible and hopefully save that servant. All you need to do is target the guy, uh, the enemy and hit it once or twice to get it to stop. And it'll run away. There we go. We saved the guy. But what's this? Weird obelisk with Chaturga's rune on it? Yeah, he shows up down there and heals himself. So, you okay? Shaken by his brush with death, the servant gives his thanks. He warns the creature might still be around and extra firepower would be handy. Reminded by his own words, he fishes a key from his pocket and gives it to Edward. The gun cabinet key! Nice! Let's go unlock the gun cabinet, because something tells me having a big gun is gonna help us. And get that, there we go. Yeah, you only get uh, this if you saved the servant. Now this is something new. Mode, this function allows character to change the fire selector on guns. Well, certain guns. The elephant gun, let's look at it. The Holland & Holland double rifle fires an enormous 50 by three inch nitro slug, quite capable of stopping rhino or elephants dead in their tracks. Only a crazy man would feel comfortable facing a Holland and Holland. Notice it has one bullet there. Change the mode, it fires both shells at the same time. Now this is the type of gun, when you're aiming, take a moment when you lock on to brace yourself. And then he'll stop wavering. And it will be a more accurate shot. And he'll, because he's braced himself, the recoil won't be as bad. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the Reveal Invisible because I have a feeling it's about to wear off. And let's see if we can find where the creature is. Has he, has he come up here? We don't know. If you listen, you can sometimes hear him open doors. Hmm. Probably wandering around somewhere. You can just wait for him to... Oh, there he is! No, no, come back. Ah, missed him. You can catch him if you swing right as he's running by you, but if you're trying to catch up to him, you probably will not hit him from behind. That's alright. Real close. Go in there, save that guy. Hit him a few times. Hey, you missed me. Oh, no, that time he hit the shield. All right, refresh the shield. And you'll see, once again, he's running down there and healing himself. So if we can't find a way to stop him from healing himself, this fight will never end. But you can probably tell he's headed down to the basement where it is. Let's head down and watch for him to show up again. Oh, re-up the Reveal Invisible spell. That magic pool is making sure we don't have to worry about, you know, uh, any of our magic. See, we just stand still and it's completely back up to full already. The magic pool spell... Oh, it's gone. Specifically, the higher rank spells, the 5 and 7 point, they last longer, so you get more of an effect out of it, not having to re-up the spell as much. And if you do Manta Rock, it refills all three. Now, I could be wrong, but I feel like the rate at which it refills all three gauges is slightly less than the rate of each of the individual ones. It's kind of jack of all trades, king of none. But hey, if you're down in health and stamina, or down in health and sanity, then it's absolutely worth trying it if you're playing with the Manta Rock Rune. Now, here he comes. Got him. Just keep attacking him. 
Oh, my enchant item wore off. And if you defeat him the third time, in its desperation to escape from Edward, the vampiric creature drops the top half of a key onto the floor. We know he's headed back down there. Thankfully, after defeating him for the third time, he will stay down there. So, let's... I'm going to give myself a... Uh, oh, actually, before anything else... Full magic pool. Because thankfully, Edward has a lot of magical energy. There we go. Let's get a big enchantment on our sword. Oop, went too early. There we go. I want a lot of power on this thing. And, you know, while we're in the inventory, let's combine the bottom half and top half. And fix the key. If you're fixing an item, just use the three point. There's never a need to fix something with the higher circle of power. Let's see, Saber's Enchanted. Um, I'm going to put a full shield up. Or shield, there it is. Just to protect us as much as, po as, much as possible. Ooh. I may have wanted to use Reveal Invisible first to make sure I had enough magic for it. Uh, that's probably enough. Yes. Now we're ready for battle. Let's go in after the thing. Right, we have to unlock the door. Now I'll tell you, don't bother attacking the thing when you get down here. Run past it and attack the obelisk. Hit it four times and it crumbles. And now we've got a shield, so we just wail away at this guy. Don't have to worry about running around him and dodging his attacks. Come on. We did it. We beat him. I'm a little sad we don't get to get an autopsy of this guy because he happens after Max's story. But, hey, we did it. A tattered scroll lies on the dusty shelf. Summon horror. So, yeah, we had summon trapper and summon zombie. Do it with a seven point and it becomes summon horror. I'm not going to bother with that for now. There will be a point later we need to do it. I'll cover it when we get there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hidden in the shadowy corner of the basement, an antique double shotgun is displayed on the wall. That's a nice little gun. So we actually have quite a few weapons as Edward and quite a bit of ammo down here. I'll definitely stock up. So we've got the saber, got the elephant gun, we've got a revolver, and double shotgun. The Ithaca Model A shotgun was also known as the auto or home burglar gun. Double-barreled, breech-loaded shotgun capable of firing one or both barrels simultaneously. Yep, I'm switching it to both. Oh, more shotgun shells. And with that obelisk out of the way, inside the well, a crumbling ladder leads down into the glowing darkness. Should Edward venture down the ladder? Yes. And much like Max, we're heading down to the city here. Maximilian had not lied. The city is miraculous. It glows in the darkness like an incredible jewel, but the thought of what lies inside, the guardians of Chaturga, makes Edward shiver with fear. Nine great towers dwarf the surrounding city. Perhaps the towers serve as a focus, channeling great tides of energy into the city itself. Maybe so. Uh, now before we get down further, let's get powerful shield. And I'm just going to use the basic enchant. Oh, wait, no, it won't go yet. There we go. Basic enchant on the elephant gun. Make it all glowy blue. And the double shotgun. Because I want to show off these weapons. So let's head down into the city.
And I heard something. Are we going to fight a greater guardian? No, a couple horrors. So, lock on. Shoot. Notice he recoils. If you go too early... Look here, we'll lock, uh, lock onto this one. And see, he knocks himself flat on his back if you shoot before the aiming is really lined up. Alright, well, I got one down. Let's switch over to the double shotgun. And... Double shotgun has a much shorter range. You need to be closer, but it's quicker and the reload is faster. And I think it's actually more powerful. Yeah, the elephant gun's neat, but honestly, I'm, for the most part, don't really like it. I prefer the double shotgun. Now, there are uses for the elephant gun, which we'll get to in a second, but for the moment, run up here, point blank, shoot him. Reload. Two shots from close up with the double shotgun should kill any horror? Alright, you know what? I'm not wasting more shotgun ammo on you. Maybe I should. It's gonna be quicker. Alright, fine. There we go. You're down. Reload this. And wait for his... He's gonna shoot a magical blast at me. Dodge it. Alright. I'm gonna hit you with one of each. Although I think you have a shield up, don't you? You do. Let's dispel magic, just a five point of blue. Right. Dodge your attack. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Now, double shotgun. There are a lot of areas in here where you can run past enemies. Like, you didn't have to fight the horrors at the entrance, but trust me, you want to clear this room out. Which, will, for a reason that will make sense very soon. Uh, you're heading up here? Alright. I was expecting that to do more damage to you. Let's re-enchant it. Also, let's get some healing up. Because I took some hits there. Uh, you... Get rid of your head so you don't chase after me. Where are you going? Back to your starting spot? Kinda, yeah. There we go, he's down. And you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll finish you off. Get a chunk of stamina. I keep saying stamina. Get a chunk of sanity back. Now, you'll notice a ton of doors on the side. They're all guarded by force fields. So what we're going to do, head to the only door we can open. And what's this place? These plinths look like the ones Pius had encountered in the Forbidden City, where he found the essences of the ancients. Edward briefly wonders what their purpose could be. And, ooh, what is this, a stargate? It would seem as though the array itself serves as a massive circle of power. Each switch around the perimeter of this room corresponds to a focusing tower where a rune may be scribed. Once a spell has been scribed, it is magically, mag it is magically, it is magnified by the array. Could this be the Guardian City's weakness? If one could somehow remove the magic from this area, I think let's give it a try. So walk around to the array. A pulsating field of energy emanates from the stone. Touch the field. And a teleporter activates. Let's head onto the platform, see where it sends us. We're up on a tower somewhere off in the distance of the city. Remember what that description said, nine towers around? Well, walk up to the top, examine it, and you get to select a rune. Thankfully here, we don't have to worry about a choice, we just select Pargon. Once you do that, head back through the teleporter, and I'm sure it'll take us right back to where we just were. Nope. All right, we got a couple horrors. Let's just run up here. And, ooh, point blank shot, got him in one. Dodge your attack. 
kill these guys off. Oh, I love being able to kill them with just a single shot of the double shotgun. Now, you'll see up here, the pathway is blocked, but there's a switch. So, let's trigger this. A lever is situated nearby. Pull it. And it opens the doorway. So head through. And you'll find yourself in a familiar room. Oh, he's running out of energy. <laughs> and going crazy. So, the pathway's open back to here. What you have to do is repeat this process for each of the nine towers. Now, this can take a while, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed it up as we run through. Pretty much for the most part, unless I have to, I'm going to be avoiding enemies, just running past them. I'm probably gonna put magical, sh uh, magical pool, actually let's do that now. Magic pool and a full shield. And I'll detail if something out of the ordinary happens, but for the most part, all you do is just keep running, trigger the switches, and head back. So let's get our shield up. And here, you'll notice you actually have to pick a rune. Item, area, creature, or self. You want area, because they said you want to get rid of the magic around here. You want to cast the spell magic. And I'll go ahead and detail this room again, because, oh, slightly different. Run past the horror. I'm going to actually switch to my revolver to kill the trapper, because I just don't want to deal with you. Pull the lever. Doorway opens. And, ah, got zapped. Let's head ahead here. Uh, oh, he's running out of stamina. That's okay. I just want to show you where this one goes, and then we'll speed everything up. You'll see it pops out here. So, a lot of the rooms are connected. You may have noticed there's, I want to say, five doorways in that main hall. But we got nine towers, so... Half of them are going to loop through other rooms. Anyway, let's go ahead and speed this up and take out, or not take out, take care of all nine towers. Actually, this is an interesting one. I'll go ahead and tell you. We're in what looks like a zoo, a prison, some kind of place where a bunch of creatures are stored. But there's no enemies to fight, so we're good. Pull the lever. Open the doorway. And... A Zelotop Horror, a Chaturka Zombie, and an Ulioth Trapper all break free. Yeah, just ignore them. Run away. Fight him if you want, there is no real need. And we're back here. Let's speed it up again. Boy, that was creepy. Vision of a giant worm coming out and eating him. And it's nice, he actually used his liquid courage in the cutscene to restore his sanity back to normal. But thankfully nothing we had to fight there. Let's continue on. Thank you. 
And you may guess, from the arrangement of the runes, we have to make a choice here. Protect, Summon, Absorb, Dispel, or Project. We want Dispel. Go ahead and head through the teleporter, and let's speed this up again. We've arrived at the final tower, and you know what? I think let's have some fun with this last trapper here. Load the gun. And supreme overkill, blow the trapper away with the elephant gun. <laughs> I mean, why not? I'm not using the gun for anything else. So with this final one, we have to pick our alignment. Chaturga, Zelatoth, or Ulioth. Well, since we're going against Chaturga, pick Ulioth. And that gate opens, finally. You'll also notice all the runes have changed color. They're matching the alignment. Edward's meddling with the arrays has conjured incredible energies that are now building up inside the city and can't be contained for long. Edward needs to escape the city. You'll also notice our little teleporters changed color. We got one last trick, but oh, get out of my way. Oh, you're not gonna, cause you had a shield. Fine, I'll just run past you. Get out of here, and when you show up here, oh yeah, a lot of Greater Guardians show up. Get the heck out of there. Do not stay and fight. And this is why I actually took out those two horrors on the way in, because they would be waiting for you on the way out if you hadn't. And you're probably running out of stamina. See, he's starting to wheeze and lean over a little bit. But let's get out of here. All right, climb the stairs, and maybe we can see from this balcony what our magic has done. Come on, Edward.
Yikes. What a way to go. And you notice it was right as the clock struck three, shortly before that 3.33 time. Master, I bring thee grave news. A colony of guardians in the ruins of Engar has been decimated. Without them, I fear we are lost. Your fears are unfounded, servant. Listening to the moment, I have seen the future that will come to pass. In this vision, I see myself crushing Zenithoth as I was destined to do. My many mouths consume its body from all sides, gnawing at it. Oof. Well, we dealt them a serious blow, but it's not over yet. Alex finds a scrap of paper tucked between the pages of the tome. It appears to be a note from Edward. A small note written on a page from the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Dear Alex, I have left you a small surprise to keep you going when everything seems to go awry. It was my favorite tipple, and there are several barrels of it in the basement. Please help yourself to what you can find. My guess is that I won't be needing it. Your loving grandfather, Edward. Sure, Grandpa. We'll go get some... Some booze, I guess. So, let's head down to the basement. See if we can find what he's talking about. So, you may remember down here, there were some barrels off to the left. There's something stashed between the barrels of port. Should Alex pull it out? You get a pickaxe. Interesting. A hefty pickaxe for demolishing walls. Too cumbersome to be used as a weapon, it might come in handy somewhere else. Well, I can think of one place we can use it. Let's head upstairs. And there was a certain area we could never get into. Not in the past, not in the present, but we know there's a room behind this section of wall. Use the pickaxe. Yeah, Max started going mad. He thought all of his servants were possessed and killed them all. And you'll notice this I find fascinating. We have a damage field, a protective barrier, but we're fighting against Chaturka. Why is this one Ulioth? It's because this was actually set by Max. That's why it's only a three-point barrier and why it's Ulioth, because that was the dominant you know, spell that we've been using. So, let's dispel magic three point with Zelototh to get rid of it. And let's examine the pile of ugh, an antique stethoscope seemingly accidentally dropped into the pile of ash glints brightly in the light of the room. Let's retrieve it. What's up? Very odd stethoscope. Antique stethoscope made of brass. Used for amplifying the sound of a beating heart, this one is probably 200 years old. Well, you may recall earlier... Oof. We found a spot that it basically said, hey, if we had a stethoscope... Um, I want my weapon equipped. Because there are enemies. You can hear them. Kill the bone thief. 
and ah, Trapper got me. Uh, we found an area down in the basement that said, hey, if maybe we had a stethoscope, we could do something with it. Yeah, I don't really care about restoring. I'm good. Uh, you, chop your head off. Get out of my way. Yeah, might as well top it off. Run past these guys. I love that if you chop their head off before they see you, it doesn't affect your sanity, or in my case, health, because sanity is completely gone. Oh! Another bone thief. Yeah, I noticed it took two hits to kill him before three hits when we're enchant has worn off. So let's re-enchant that. just in case we encounter anything else. Oh, like you. Yeah, one or two overhand swings and you're dead. Get out of my way. I'm not dealing with you right now. Head down to the basement once again. And you'll remember this safe. Now that Alex has the stethoscope, she can easily hear the tumblers inside. To open the safe, the dial should be turned to the right until the tumblers can be heard falling into place, then turn to the left until the same sound is heard, and finally to the right until the sound of the safe being unlocked is heard. Let's open it. So, we need to go... Is it? It's 60, I think, is the first one. There we go. You can hear the click. Now. Go all the way around until you pass 60 again, then head toward 80. Got it. And then head to the left until about 45, 46. Open it up. We got several things. As the safe door hinges open, its contents are revealed. Many important items left behind by Edward lie on the shelves inside. Let's collect them. The Essence of Ulioth, a Crankshaft, Letter from Edward, her grandfather, and Chapter Page, entitled Ashes to Ashes. along with it, young and vibrant. Yes, I have seen it coming. A worthy sacrifice, I am sure, and one that will allow the greater guardian that resides below to finish its channeling. With this sacrifice of souls, I make unto thee, great one. The gate shall be ready to be opened, and your freedom shall be at hand. Ooh, that's not good. Well, let's glance at our stuff we got. Essence of Ulioth, we've seen before. It's Veil. Crankshaft, a large brass crankshaft, seemingly part of an antique. Maybe we'll find some use of that. And a letter from Edward. Dear Alexandra, if you are reading this, Alex, then I am surely dead. Knowing that the police will contact my only living relative, I made sure to leave this message for you. As I write this letter, Pius Augustus is waiting for his chance to strike me down for what I have done to the Guardian City. I believe I have slowed Augustus' plans, but not stopped them completely. He will still try to bring his ancient into this world. You must continue what our ancestor Max has started. You must gather the artifacts and call forth an ancient to combat what Augustus brings into this world. Of the artifacts, there are four, but one of these is in the clutches of Pius himself. They are the Black Heart of Mantarok, the Claw of Chaturga, the Sigil of Zelototh, 
The Vale of Uliath. Your skill in the arcane science will not be as strong as Pius's, who has had two millennium to prepare his gate. You will need all the remaining artifacts to match his power. It all rests with you, my dear. I wish you well in this desperate act. I wish I had more guidance for you, but I am at my wit's end, and I feel I am running out of time. Your loving grandfather, Edward. I kind of like that they voiced that one. It's a nice touch. And we'll check the chapter page in a bit, but he talks about the different uh, essences. Obviously, Pius has Chaturga, but now we have Ulioth and Mantarok. Maybe there's some way we can get Zelatoth. But that is going to do it for this episode. What a crazy one. Managed to finally find out what exactly happened to Edward. But next time, we're going to journey into possibly one of my favorite chapters. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure to click like and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.